Hey everybody, Danny here and welcome back. Do you think speed is important when it comes to website performance? Well, it is. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to build out a proper website for speed and performance. Also towards the end of this video, I'm going to actually walk you through the entire setup process of choosing a server, how to launch a WordPress site in under one minute, and also what plugins that we use and recommend. Now, a one second delay in page load time results in 11% of fewer page views, 16% of decrease in customer satisfaction, and 7% in loss in conversions. Now your site taking a few extra seconds to load will have a negative impact on the ability to engage visitors and make sales. There's no getting around it. This means that having a fast site is essential, not just for ranking well with Google, but also for keeping your bottom line profits high. How website speed optimization influences conversions. It's as simple as this. Slow sites kill conversions. In fact, 47% of consumers expect websites to load in two seconds or less. And 40% will actually abandon a page that takes three seconds or more to load. So if your site takes more than three seconds to load, you're gonna lose almost half of your visitors instantaneously even before they arrive on your site. That alone is a huge blow to your potential conversions. Now it's clear that putting in the effort to increase your site speed even by one second could have a major impact on conversions. Your website speed influences visibility. Now that Google takes speed into consideration when ranking sites, your load times can also influence how easily users can find you in the first place. Mobile user experience will now play a major role in search rankings, even in desktop search results. Now, pages are indexed and ranked based on the experience that they provide mobile users. So if you want to maintain or improve your rankings and visibility, it's essential to know how to reduce loading time of a website. You must have a site that provides a quick and easy user experience on any browser or screen size. Now, what is a good page load time? So before you start working on your site speed, it's a good idea to kind of get and figure out what a good goal is of where you want to be. That can be difficult if you're not sure what an acceptable page speed is. Now, according to Google, best practice is three seconds. Unfortunately, according to its recent benchmark report findings, most sites are nowhere near that. This means that general site owners in general have a lot of work to do to get their sites up to par in Google's eyes. Now, on the flip side, it also means that if you put in the work to get your speed of your website to an acceptable level, you're well ahead of the pack in terms of user experience. Now, how to speed up your website? That's an important question. Now, there's gonna be different factors that influence how long each page on your site takes to load. So there are many different steps that you can take to increase your speed and improve your experience choosing the right hosting option for your needs. Most new site owners choose the cheapest possible option for hosting. Now, while this is often enough in the beginning, you'll likely need to upgrade once you start getting more traffic. With a dedicated server, you have much, much more space, but you also have more work to do with configuration and technical setup. If you need tons of space and want complete control over your hosting, this is gonna be your best bet. For over 13 years, I've been using WordPress. It's pretty standard, it's easy to set up, and it's easy to manage. And in my opinion, it's one of the best content management systems for managing your website. Now, as far as servers go, we recommend Cloudways. Now, more on that a little bit later in this video. Run a compression audit. It's in your best interest to get your files to the smallest that they can be without sacrificing quality. Smaller your files are, the faster that they're gonna load and the lower that your overall load times will be. Now, pages with lots of images and other content can often end up being over 100 kilobytes in size. As a result, they're gonna be bulky and slow to download, but you can easily speed that up by compressing them. Compression involves compressing HTML, CSS, and JavaScript into plain text files. You can speed up download times by compressing them. This compression involves HTML, CSS, JavaScript, plain text, and XML files. Now having a good server and proper plugin setups can take care of the compression for you. 
reduce image sizes. Now, images can play a major role in your site speed. They're often very large files which can slow down at page load times, but removing them altogether is not an option. One of the best ways is to get your conversion rate to this level is including lots of helpful product images. In one survey, 66% of consumers said that they wanted to see at least three product photos before purchasing. This means that if you want to run a successful e-commerce site, images are absolutely necessary. That also means that image compression is gonna be critical, and this is important whether your site includes an e-commerce store or not. You're also gonna to wanna to make sure that you're using appropriate file types for each image. Now, this may seem like a minor concern, but the file types that you use can affect each file size. You have a few different options, but some of the most common ones are gonna be JPEG, PNG, and GIFs. Now, WebP or WEPB is a standard when it comes to proper image format in Google's eyes. There are a few plugins that we're gonna to touch base a little bit later that you can use inside of WordPress that will be able to convert JPEG and PNG formats over to WEPB. Optimize CSS delivery. Now, CSS holds the style requirements for your page. It's what makes it look good. Generally, your website accesses this information in one of two different ways. In an external file, which loads before your page renders, or inline, meaning it is part of the HTML document itself. Now, this reduces the size of your code and creates fewer code duplications. Prioritize above-the-fold content, aka lazy loading. You can improve user experience by having your above the fold or top of the page section load fast, even if the rest of the page takes a fewer seconds to load. This is called lazy loading and it's particularly helpful for pages with lots of content below the fold. For example, let's say you write a blog post that includes 20 photos. Normally a user's browser would need to download all those images before displaying anything on the page. With lazy loading, it can load the content within view first then load all the other photos later. This way the user doesn't have to wait to access the page and the images will load as they come into view. This can significantly reduce load times on posts with tons of images. Reduce the number of plugins that you use on your website. Now, plugins can do a lot to improve your WordPress site. You can use them to add custom functionality, clean up code, improve user experience, and much more. Unfortunately, having too many plugins installed can cause some issues. They can slow down your site, create security issues, and even cause crashes and other technical difficulties. Deactivating and deleting any that are unnecessary can both improve your overall speed and make maintenance easier in the long run. Monitor your speed over time. Now, as you work to improve your site speed and add plugins, if you're using WordPress or any other content management system, it's gonna be a good idea to monitor how it changes over time. This is important even after you've achieved an acceptable page load time. Monitoring your load times on a regular basis can help you catch any issues early on and keep your site in good shape. Monitor mobile page speed. So in addition to monitoring your load times on desktop, you're gonna to wanna to pay particular attention to how well your website loads on mobile devices. So mobile user experience now impacts all of your site's rankings. Plus, it's gonna be in your best interest to provide a fast user-friendly site to mobile users. Even small steps towards reducing load time can make a difference in your business. When you consider the impact that even one second can have on your conversions and success, you'll realize that all of these are entirely worth it. So to wrap up this video, let's spend a few more minutes and go over how to set up Cloudways if you're interested in that server setup. Um, what server to use in particular inside of Cloudways, how to launch a WordPress site in under one minute, and also what plugins that we utilize every day within our agency. Okay, so Cloudways, again, it's, it's, a, it's a server. Um, they have been very well uh, as far as performance goes and speed and just manageability of, of all the, uh, the, the websites that we manage inside of Cloudways. Um, and they've, they've been awesome. Um, there's five different cloud providers inside of Cloudways. Um, you can host unlimited applications and, and an application is essentially a website. Um, you know, all different PHP applications are supported uh, and, and they have a pretty cool control panel uh, that you typically don't see, but it's very easy to use. 
Um, it just took me a day, just, you know, just kind of messing with it uh, and going through it. So let's go ahead and log in real quick. Um, actually, before we log in, let me just go over some of the pricing real quick. Um, if you are in the United States, uh, one of the best, uh, remember I just mentioned that there's five different, uh, five different uh, cloud providers. Um, the one that you want to use if you are in the United States is going to be DigitalOcean. Um, personally, I have not tested any of the other four. I haven't tested Linode, Volter, um, AWS, or Google Cloud with Cloud uh, with Cloudways. I've only done DigitalOcean. That's been that, that was recommended to me, and everyone that I know uh, that has switched over to Cloudways using DigitalOcean, they've been super happy. Okay, so let's go ahead and log in real quick here. And it's just going through some security, some security checks real quick here. So once we are logged in, there are there's a couple sections on here that you will see. You know, ever since I've had Cloudways, which has been over a year, um, I only go into two different sections, and and really 99% of it is going to be in one. Uh, the one percent that I use uh, was only when I upgraded my server, and that's in the servers uh, uh, application here. So essentially, the servers is pretty much like the billing part. Um, when you launch a server, then you pay for that server depending on uh, you know the the amount of RAM that you have on your on your server, um, the hard drive space, and and all sorts of stuff. Um, and what server, which of the five cloud servers that you chose. Um, so essentially, we have one server, and currently we have 120 different uh, applications or websites uh, set up. On this server now, not all of them are live. A lot of them could be staging. Some could be in development. Uh, but in total, uh, there's an unlimited number of applications that you can host depending on uh, your server performance, uh, such as hard drive space and RAM and things like that. So once you set up your server, uh, you would come over here to applications, and then you could launch a new application. Uh, it's pretty simple. You just choose a server. Click on Add Application, pick the WordPress version if you want to do multi-site or just regular WooCommerce or just PHP, Magento, uh, you know, whatnot, and then just name it. So in this case, I'm just going to do Jarvis Test and click on Add Application. And after that, it's pretty much going to get it installed. It takes two minutes to get it installed. And pretty much we just set up WordPress uh, even without knowing what we were doing. Uh, it took me probably 30 seconds to walk you through this process right now. And that was the process of launching the website, the temporary site, and also WordPress. So once this finishes, I'm going to take you into the application settings where you're going to be able to see how to access the admin page of WordPress along with the username and the password for WordPress. So once the application has finished uh, getting set up, you can log into it uh, by clicking into the application and it's going to give you a variety of different uh, management systems here. Uh, the most important one is going to be the access details. Uh, this is going to be the admin panel for your website. Uh, this is going to be the username and then this will be the random password that was generated. Um, that's honestly the only thing you really need uh, as far as the, the, the basics goes. Um, with that information, you're going to be logging to, you're going to be able to log into WordPress and you can start managing, creating your site and do all sorts of, uh, of other stuff. Um, all this other stuff is very technical. I'm not going to get into any of this. Um, I understand pretty much everything here. I used to be a developer, but this is not something that really is needed, uh, for this particular course. So we're not going to get into those later. Other than that, uh, it, it's pretty simple. So the next thing that we're going to go ahead and do is I'm going to log into uh, one of our sites where I'm going to show you all the current plugins that we use in order to get high speed performance that we use every day within our agency. Okay, so now that we are inside of, uh, of a WordPress site, I'm going to walk you through uh, some of the core plugins that we use uh, on every site. Um, I'm not going to go through every single one. Some of them have other purposes. Uh, but I'm just going to cover some of the core ones uh, that uh, that we launch on on every site uh, pretty much automatically. And again, this is for speed and performance and also which it can be used for SEO as well. OK, so one of the previous videos I mentioned table of contents, easy table of contents is our preferred choice of a plugin. Uh, it's very easy to set up. 
uh, and it just looks great out of the box. No customization necessary for that. Uh, and it's good for SEO purposes as well, which is why I'm mentioning it here. Contact forms, every site needs a contact form. We use Gravity Forms for that. Imagify, this allows you to optimize all of your images for uh, for speed, shrinks them down, but still keeps them uh, in pretty good quality uh, resolution. And in Google's eyes, WEBP format of images is uh, the preferred choice. And Imagify allows you to optimize and convert your images to that format. Another one that we like to use for interlinking is Link Whisper. It just makes it super easy uh, to go through uh, all of our blogs and kind of, you know, just interlink between uh, other pages and other articles on our sites. Oxygen is our preferred builder when it comes to the look of the site. We used to use Elementor, but we've, you know, it's been probably three, four months out that we've converted all of our sites from Elementor over to Oxygen. Uh, we used Elementor for years and years and years. As far as page speed performance to Google, Oxygen gives us a higher score on both mobile and desktop, which is our preferred choice. So we went with that direction. As far as an SEO plugin, we utilize Rank Math SEO Pro. Pro is just the unlimited version. Gives us really good analytical data, uh, brings in all, you know, most of everything from Google Analytics right here directly on the dashboard. And it just allows us to go through and optimize all of our blog posts pretty easily. So we go with that. And then the last, uh, the last two would be a WP Rocket. So WP Rocket is the performance plugin. So WP Rocket takes care of uh, caching, file optimization, uh, lazy load, which I've mentioned preloading files, a database optimization. You can set up CDN networks on here and a whole bunch of other stuff. This is by far the best performance plugin that we've used that gives us the best scores as possible. And then the last plugin that we have started to use recently is the WP SEO Structure Data Schema Pro plugin. Just makes it super easy to set up the right schema structure for all of our websites. And there you go. So hopefully you found that to be useful. Um, and I will see you in the next video.